So I am actually not a data scientist. I'm a data journalist. I came from journalism, traditional journalism. Um, I started working at The Independent in 2011. Um, and I decided to go into data journalism because I thought it was much more interesting, much more innovative, and I could kind of carve a bit of a niche there. Um, and I have worked at the Daily Mirror. I've done a bit of freelancing for The Guardian. I've worked at a few different national papers. And now I actually work at the Office for National Statistics. I don't know if anyone's heard of that. Obviously, you would have done. Um, and we produce a lot of the UK's data. Um, but I don't work on producing statistics. I'm more about translating it for people to understand. So I kind of do journalism at the ONS, which is a bit of a, a weird job. Um, but actually, I'm not here to speak to you about the ONS at all. I'm here to, do, uh, to speak to you about my newsletter, Fair Warning. Um, basically, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's, I started writing it last March when I was working at ITV News doing freelance work, um, doing breaking news. And essentially, I wanted to keep in, in with data journalism and keep up with the technologies that are being used. So I thought, what better way to do it than to kind of start my own thing and make myself um, keep up with what's going on. So what I do now is every Sunday, I post this out to people. Um, and basically, what's in it is uh, the stories from the week, uh, like things that people were doing, like The Economist, The Washington Post, things like that. And at the moment, it's got about five, no, 760 subscribers. Um, and this is just a little bit of data about it. Um, it's not particularly <laughs> interesting, but it's been quite steady. And I, I've been running it for about a year now. I've done about 54 newsletters. Um, and it's kind of grown quite steadily. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is the open rate and click rate, which is kind of interesting. Um, because if you look at commercial like email marketing newsletters, it's normally the open rate is like 24, 25%, and the click rate is like 4%. And, and mine performs a lot better, but I mean, this is not a marketing opportunity. I'm not getting paid for it. It's just my kind of passion, and it's just what I want to kind of speak to people about. So that's that. Um, in terms of what I wanted to talk to you about today, I wanted to talk about the lessons that I've learned from doing it. There's three things that I've kind of learned during my year of writing about it. Um, I don't know about anyone else in this room, but when I talk to my friends about the fact that I do data, I think they think it's really boring, and everyone's like, why are you interested in that? And I'm like, it's actually really, really interesting. And there are so many different things that you can do with data. Um, so you know, the first lesson is data doesn't have to be boring. Um, the second is that data journalism as a field is, although it's, it's relatively new, data visualization as a field started in like the 1800s, it's really, really old, but in terms of uh, new, you know, new technologies and people doing it more and more, it's kind of had a resurgence recently, um, and there's so many interesting things happening. So that, that for me is really exciting. Um, and the third one is that I was really, really surprised when I was doing it one week, when I found a visualization that actually made me cry. Um, and it's kind of, I think for a lot of people, that's quite shocking. Like, why would you cry at data? That's crazy, right? Um, you know, you wouldn't open a spreadsheet and be like sobbing. Um, so it, it's, a, it's an interesting kind of a thing that I found out. So um, yeah, so data doesn't have to be boring. Um, these two maps are actually things that I made. Um, so the first one is uh, when I was at the mirror, I worked for a, a kind of section of the mirror called Amped. I don't know if anyone here has heard of it. It started in 2013 and sadly died in 2015. Um, but I was there for the whole time. And we kind of did these fun, weird maps. Uh, so this is basically, I looked at the data for what breeds of cat were like where in the country. And I kind of made that map. It's actually an interactive map, but I won't show you it. Um, and the second one, is interesting in a different way. So I was doing, it was one of the first issues that I made, and I found um, a map of Australia that was, <laughs> it had two different shades. One shade was no sheep, and the other shade was some sheep. And I thought that was quite funny. I thought that's a really bizarre map to have. So I thought, is there anything I can do that's like interesting, that's kind of more local? So I did this map about sheep in Wales, 
uh, hand drew it. But but the thing I'm sort of you know it doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be about you know spreadsheets and you know plain graphs and that kind of thing. Um, and what's funny about that is I actually ended up moving to Wales. <laughs> After that, I'm from London and I moved to Wales for my job. But actually, before I even this was before I even knew that I was moving, so it's quite weird. Um, oh, before I sorry, before I start about that, does anyone has anyone here seen Hamilton the musical? Okay, amazing. <laughs> um, you should definitely see it if you haven't seen it. It's come to London and it's going to be here for a while. Um, I'm obsessed with it. It's uh, in, it's an incredible musical. But basically, this is a visualization of the lyrics and who is singing what. This was um, this is just a short video kind of showing you as you like hover around what it shows. And basically, the woman that did this, every, every bubble is like a selection of lyrics, and the colors are um, like different characters. So in this, you can see, oh, I've changed it now, but you can see the relationship between the characters as the musical progresses. And you can kind of click around and um, you know, pick what you're interested in. Um, and as you scroll further down, it changes again to be about um, different themes across the musical. So basically, th this woman who is a great data visualization expert, she loves Hamilton the musical, and she thought, well, you know, I, I love it, I'm going to make data out of it, and I'm going to make an interactive that you can explore this musical. So that's quite an interesting thing. That's one of my favorite visualizations, actually. Um, in terms of data journalism being cutting edge and innovative, I'm quite excited about that because I work in it. Um, but yeah, a, a couple of examples I'll show you. And um, this is an amazing piece by The Guardian. It actually won an award last night at the North American Media Awards. It won the award for best data visualization. And I'll try and explain as it goes. Essentially, I don't know whether there are any Americans in the audience, but I didn't know this. Uh, in cities where there are lots of homeless people, um, because the cities don't want them, they basically give them a one-way bus ticket, and they just go, like, go anywhere. Like, we don't care. We want you gone. And so The Guardian did this investigation, looking at where the homeless people were moved to, and like, where they were. They've basically been bussed out of where they live. And as you scroll down again, it kind of, there's a lot to it. Like, there's a lot of interviews. There's a lot of video. And also data visualization that kind of tells the story in, in multiple different ways. But it's just, for me, such a fascinating story. I, I never knew anything about it. So it's, it's really interesting. And this is, um, people were flown as well out of the country and like to different places around the country, which is just crazy to me. Um, so yeah, it's a really interesting one. And this is a, an interesting one because it's very, very different. Um, essentially, this person decided to look at where is like the top most viewed music video on YouTube across the world. So this map is fully explorable, and you can just click around and see. So in America, like This Is America by Childish Gambino was the most popular in a lot of places. In London at the moment, it's like Freaky Friday. And if you click on them, you can play the videos in the background. And for me, it kind of it's quite interesting because it shows like cultural differences and cultural like you know what music the people like and and. The, U the UK kind of follows the US, whereas in a lot of other countries, they actually have like, their own language music videos, obviously, because they're not always interested in English language. Um, and yeah, so in Cardiff, where I am, it's also Freaky Friday, so. <laughs> um, in terms of the emotion emotional kind of impact of data visualization, um, I'll talk to you about it before I show you. Um, so this was a piece by the New York Times. And effectively, it's, uh, so I think they published it after the Parkland shooting in the school in Florida. Um, so it was earlier this year. And I remember when I, when I kind of saw it, I thought, oh, what is this? Like, this doesn't really look like much. And as I scrolled down, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I can see it, I get it. Um, and basically, it shows you, it's kind of got the mass shootings that happen alongside um, the action that Congress has taken. So if you see, it starts at uh, 2012, and the red is like action that Congress has taken. And it's just, there is nothing. Um, and all along, like, there's 
you know, there are shootings happening, like hundreds of people have been killed, and Congress has done absolutely nothing until, uh, I think, March, um, which was basically a really minor bill that they kind of put through. So for me, that was, I think also it kind of tells you the power of no data as well as data itself. Like, there, there is no data in that, really. But that is such a powerful message about, you know, they're not doing anything, and it's, it's just crazy to me. Um, the next one, this just made me really angry. So if you look at the um, stuff coming in from the left, what you can see is black boys, which are in blue, and white boys in yellow. And they all grew up rich, and it shows basically that black boys are dropping into, um, as they grow up, they become poor adults. More likely, they're more likely to become poor adults than white boys. And for me, this is not only, I've never seen this kind of visualization before, so I was really impressed by it anyway, but it also told like a really interesting, you know, an interesting story. And I, I'm, I kind of look at it and go, why is no one doing anything about this? Like, it's crazy that this is the case. Um, so that's another really, really good visualization. Um, so during all of my career doing data visualization and data journalism, I've always been banging on about how charts can change minds and how it's really important to explain things to people in a really simple way, which is what I do. Um, and really recently, in the last week or two, there was actually a study that was carried out that showed that people who see a chart about data are more likely to understand the issue and understand the data. So this, what this chart shows is that um, it's like the chart showing the percentage that incorrectly believe that global temperatures have decreased or stayed the same. And for people that weren't given any information, a lot of them believed it wrongly. And the, the dark blue is people who are showing a chart of the data. So that, to me, kind of speaks volumes. Because also, compared to uh, having a text summary, like a chart actually does, you know, a picture tells a thousand words, right? So that's kind of how I feel about it. And, it's, it's quite nice that I've been vindicated, really, because I've been talking about this for so long. Um, and that is my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I just wanted to say, if you want to subscribe, it's at bit.ly forward slash F warning. Be careful with the case, because I don't know what you'll find if you don't do that case. Um, and I'm on Twitter, Sophie Warns, as well, if you want to keep in touch and speak to me. Thank you. Thank you.